so what we have before us here is everything we need to build the Digital Bird um, PTZ Plus controller. Bare basic tools, some super glue, a small screwdriver for the smaller screws. I like the flathead one, it just drives these little screws here, the M1s, easier than the star, even though it's a star end. And just a small pair of pliers just to, to tighten up some parts. Uh, in the kit, what you'll get is a three-axis uh, joystick with a button on the top. They say it's four, but it's only three. Uh, an XT on controller, sorry, an XT on display, rather. A battery board. A couple of knobs. The Digital Bird PTZ Plus uh, control board with a small joystick, the button and the pot. A switch harness and a power harness for plugging in external power supply. A selection of small screws. In terms of the plastics, there are five parts. This is the base. We have a top plate, a battery plate, the walls, an angle for the display support and a bezel for the display as well over here. So where do we start? First thing to do is take, take our battery board and if you've built any other parts of the kit you'll recognize it instantly. It's pretty much the same design, just modified for this. We take our small pronged battery board and that simply slots into here and presses down until it's flush with the bottom. Sand it if you need to to get to, to go in there as easily as that and just allow the cables to come through. Now on the other side, if you remember from other projects, you have these little battery tabs. You'll need four of these tabs and these go into, there's a slot, four slots inside here and they just help they hold the battery in place. So I'll put those in just now. Okay, so here I have <clears throat> the four tabs in and just check that your battery goes in there and when it's flat pushes forward and locks in like so. Okay so the next step, step is to take our base plate and take two of these small M1 screws, put them in here first, take your battery bay and you can see there's two pre-prepared small holes there in this face, press it down as far along as it can go and then just drive these screws in. So now that we have that in place, we take the sides or the walls of the controller and just check fit that that goes over here and fits over the base quite happily. Um, you may find you have to pair the edges uh, to get rid of some of the small noggins of plastic that build up on the part. But just check at this stage that it comes together and it will go on and off that base quite easily. Then we take our top, <clears throat> which is this part here, and that's going to fit on here like so. And to keep that in place, we're going to super glue it together. So I've drawn a small mark in the plastic here with this, where the end of this top plate stops. And I'm just going to run around that edge with some super glue and stick that together. And what I'll do is I'll just set that aside for a few minutes to dry. Okay, so once that's dried off, we can take our angle, and this is to support our next day on display. And there's a cutout in the bottom of the angle and a tab on that side, so it goes that way round. You can also see that on the right hand corner, there's a little cutout that fits into the cutout of the top. Now, before we insert that into here, we have a bezel, face like that. And the bezel is going to be super glued to the angle like so and make sure that the deeper part of the bezel, the deeper side here, is to the bottom and that the thinner side is to the top. Uh, otherwise your display won't be in the right position on the bezel. So we'll just go ahead and super glue that into place. 
Uh, incidentally, I've sanded this smooth because it's it, it's printed on the angle. You find that that'll be quite rough on those faces. So I've just taken a, a file and you know, filed these faces down to give them a bit more smoothness to make a better fit for the glue. Now I'm going to run glue along that face. And don't be tempted to put your next on display into that until this is set. Otherwise you can end up with glue on the face of your next on, which is not a good thing. It leaves a bad mark. Been there, done that. Okay, so the next step is to take your, your um, screen bezel and that needs to be glued to this top. It doesn't get glued to this back plate here for the battery bay because we need to be able to disassemble that if, if required. And we also need to get the display in here when we take this cover off. So the areas that need glued are along here, along this front edge here, and along the bottom of here where it meets the, the side walls. Okay, so we're gluing it effectively to this black area here, but not the battery bay. Check fit it first, do any proprietary work to make sure that it comes together nicely. It should come and rest like so, okay? And you should find that on this side, this seam here is flush. Okay, so I'll do that now. And so that's our case pretty much complete. One thing I forgot to mention was I put one of these quarter to three eighth uh, adapters into the side of the battery port here. And that's just in case you want to use maybe something like this mobile phone holder. Uh, if you've got a camera app you want to use with the system and you can just screw it on the side there to, to hold a phone um, if necessary. So that'll be included in the kit as well, one of those. Okay, so this is the kit here. Now we can remove this from the base and have a look at some of our electronic parts going into that now. Um, you can do your cleaning up. You can add a bit more support in behind there. Just put a couple little bits of plastic if you like, uh, just to help support that if you, if you feel it needs it. I've got a small gap in there that I've just noticed it probably could do with that. Um, so next take your switch harness and square hole in the side here, push the cable through the side and then just put your switch harness into there and it should just press hold quite readily like so. And the round hole here is for our power socket and that goes through here. Now there's also a screw with these uh, or rather a nut to go in the back of these for panel mounting. So we can put that cable through the hole And that should just push in neatly like so uh, into that hole. And on the other side of it, we can put our nut. I think it fits through here. I should hold this. Okay. So now then, let's go back to our base and we're ready to install our main board. So the main board comes on here and goes all the way to the end. That should just slot in like so. Make sure it's in on all sides. There we go. Then take two more of our shorter M1 screws and there are three holes here. And if we just make a start on that, we can find that we can just push that screw in there and screw these down. Okay, so with our board in place, we can start installing the rest of the electronics. Our power cable, first of all, plugs in and it's color coded as red on the board. Okay. 
Now our three axis joystick here, which will come with the plugs and everything pre-wired for you. Um, that just drops into here. And note this cable just comes around that part there. And the five pin goes into the five pin marked Joy 1. Okay. And just be careful because the wires that come with these joysticks are pretty thin. Uh, but this four pin socket here, you'll notice there's one pin on the one socket, four pin socket on the board here. And this is just for the switch on the top. It only uses two of those. But that presses in there. Now, on here, or next to you on display, should just slide in. And the cable end is to this side. So put the cable... <coughs> okay. So make sure that all your cables run sensibly inside here and just bring that top down onto here and it should just connect quite happily like so now take a battery run it in there and before you screw the thing together just check that your display lights up and that you can change the numbers on that display like so. Okay, with that check complete, you can turn it over and there are four holes. Now the three closest to the corners here are for these small screws, this size, and they're just self-tappers and they go in here and we can screw them up. Okay, so with everything complete here like so, all that remains is for us to put our knobs on and you can select any knobs you want, but I'll supply some in the kit and our small joystick top piece like so. And that's it complete. Turn it on. One PTZ plus controller.